Max Verstappen may be having a record-breaking season on the track, but he's far from happy with some of the media coverage he has been receiving lately. The two-time champ decided to snub Sky Sports this weekend after constant disrespect from one particular individual on their team. What led to this happening? Stay tuned to find out. After the qualifying sessions at the Mexican Grand Prix, it appeared for the first time this season that the Mercedes cars driven by Lewis Hamilton and George Russell might be in a serious fight with Max Verstappen for the race win. However, due to the tyre choices made by Red Bull and their higher speed, the Mercedes duo were forced to fight for positions that were further down the standings. As a result, Verstappen took first place at the Mexican Grand Prix, giving him a total of 14 race victories this season, which is one more than Michael Schumacher's record in 2004 and one more than Sebastian Vettel achieved in 2013. But that was not even the talking point of the Mexican Grand Prix. The major talk was about Max Verstappen and Red Bull snubbing Sky Sports. Ahead of race day at the Mexico City Grand Prix, it was reported that Verstappen would no longer conduct interviews with Sky Sports. His Red Bull team also joined him in his stance, and Sky's coverage of the Mexico City GP race suggested that the reports were true. First, during his grid walk, former Formula One driver and current Sky F1 pundit Martin Brundle had the opportunity to speak with Adrian Newey, the design boss for Red Bull, but he chose not to. The Dutchman and Red Bull refused to talk to Sky Sports in North America because they were upset with pit lane reporter Ted Kravitz. The English reporter has never shown any respect for the two-time F1 world champion. Verstappen believes that Sky's coverage has made him a target of fans' fury, and he has accused the media giants of showing disrespect towards him. After a late safety car, Verstappen was given the opportunity to pull level with his arch-rival Lewis Hamilton for a one-lap shootout at the end of the season-deciding Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. This allowed Verstappen to win the championship last year, but it was shrouded in controversy. The two-time world champion said, This whole year they have been stirring things, and they have been disrespectful, certainly one person in particular, his the 25-year-old. At some point it has been enough, then I don't accept it anymore. You can't keep living in the past. The atmosphere on social media is toxic. When you make statements like this on television, you only make it worse. I won't tolerate it now, and I decided I would not speak to them anymore. It was speculated that Kravitz's Ted's Notebook presentation at the previous round in Austin persuaded Verstappen to make this choice. During that show, Kravitz discussed what a script it would have been had Hamilton beaten Verstappen at the Circuit of the Americas. Following the race, Kravitz said Hamilton doesn't win a race all year and then finally comes back at a track where he could win the first race, battling the same guy who won the race he was robbed in the previous year and manages to finish ahead of him. What a script and a story that would have been. But that's not the way the script turned out today, was it? Because the guy that beat him after being robbed actually overtook him because he's got a quicker car, because of engineering and Formula One and design, and pretty much because of Adrian Newey. You're enjoying this video, right? You definitely don't want to miss out on other amazing videos. So all you have to do is hit the subscription button. It's that easy. Thanks for doing that. Let's move on. Team Principal Horner also spoke about the issue as he sat down with reporters after the race. We're disappointed with a series of derogatory comments that have been made on Sky, so we felt this weekend we would take a break and that it wouldn't do Sky any harm, us taking a break. There needs to be balance in commentary. Some of the commentary is excellent, but some of the pieces are not. There is too much sensationalization being done. We stand together as a team. And it's not just Sky UK, it's been across all the Sky channels in Germany and Italy. Initially, Red Bull said the boycott would be indefinite, but Horner indicated on Sunday night that their silence would end at the following round in Brazil on November 13. He said there were some derogatory comments made, so he took a break from Sky for the race. Max was upset, we were upset, and we made the decision to stand together as a team. It won't have done Sky any harm for us to lay down a marker. Some of the commentary is fair, but some pieces are sensationalist, and saying we robbed anyone of the championship, as was said in Austin, is going too far. It is not impartial or fair or balanced. We have set our piece and we'll go back to normal next time. The drivers and team principals for Red Bull are required to communicate to the media and broadcasters. But according to sources, the contract does not mention names, which means that theoretically, they are not in breach of the contract. Red Bull are hypersensitive at the moment, having been found to have breached last year's budget cap. It is understood that they felt some of the questions put to Horner by Sky Sports staff in the press conference on Friday, after their accepted breach agreement with the FIA was announced, were also targeted. 
Martin Brundle's choice to film a feature for Sky Sports at the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez while wearing a Mercedes race suit and helmet caused eyebrows to be raised at Red Bull as well. This is not the first time that Red Bull and Sky Sports have butted heads with one another. Due to pressure from Red Bull over its poor taste, Sky Sports was forced to remove footage of the Dutchman's high-speed collision with Hamilton at last year's British Grand Prix from a Merry Christmas message on their Formula One channel. This happened just before the fateful race in Abu Dhabi last December, where Verstappen won his first championship. F1 executives finalised a new contract with Sky earlier this month. According to the terms of the agreement, Sky will continue to hold exclusive broadcasting rights in the United Kingdom through the end of the 2029 season. The controversy of Red Bull snubbing Sky Sports arose in the wake of the team being fined $7 million for violating the cost cap guidelines imposed by Formula One in 2021. In addition to this, the team's expenditure limits for aerodynamic testing in the next year will be reduced by 10% as part of the punishment. In spite of the punishments, Horner stated to the press that Verstappen's championship is unaffected in any manner, and that the team received zero benefits from the budget cap breach. Brundle, a former driver who is now a pundit, responded to comments made by Verstappen by stating that a boycott of Sky Sports is the wrong approach to handling the situation. The former driver posted on Twitter, For the avoidance of doubt, my friend and colleague for the past 26 years, Ted Kravitz, has my full support. Face-to-face -face dialogue is the only way we sort out issues and disputes in the relentless crucible of the F1 paddock. We all have opinions and different jobs to do. That's life. But is he right? I will leave that for you to decide in the comment section below. While Verstappen will be looking to win his 15th race of the season, he'll be wary of the threat from the Mercedes pair behind him. Can the Dutchman win in Brazil? The event that will take place in Brazil this year will feature something of a novel procedure. On November 11th, drivers will compete in the classic qualifying round. This round will take place on Friday. In the past, this factor also determined who would take pole position. Now, the qualifying round is used to determine who will make it to the sprint race on Saturday, November 12th. This year's Brazilian Grand Prix weekend will include a brand new sprint event, which will be used to set the starting grid for the main race that will be held on Sunday. On the final day of the weekend, Sunday, November 13th, the main Formula One Grand Prix takes place. This year's event, however, carries with it less weight in comparison to previous years. That's because reigning champion Max Verstappen has already claimed the title for 2022 so there is little to play for in terms of crowning a winner. The autodromer Jose Carlos Pace, colloquially referred to in F1 circles as Interlagos for the Sao Paulo neighborhood in which the track resides, is another high altitude track. Higher elevation helped Red Bull this season in Austria and Mexico. The Interlagos track is the second highest elevation on the F1 calendar, behind only Mexico. So we might witness another Verstappen and Red Bull stunning performance in Brazil. This year, the Dutchman has once again demonstrated his immense talents as he has clearly dominated from the beginning to the end of the season and has shown that he is nearly invincible at various stages this season. The Dutchman penned a new deal with the giant drinks outfit at the start of the season and is already being heavily backed to land a third consecutive title next year. What are your thoughts on the statements made by Kravitz? Are Verstappen and Red Bull justified in the actions that they took? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. That will be all for today's video. Thanks for staying tuned. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you can always get to watch more amazing videos like this. See you in the next video.